Welcome back to the Talos Principle. I was going to move on to the next zone immediately in this episode, but in between recording the last one and starting recording this one, the fact that I was missing one star from zone number one was really bothering me. So I'm missing the star from this place here. That was really bothering me, so I just, just ran around jumping like crazy trying to look for the star, and guess what? I found it. It is actually right here. So before I couldn't even find the star, the problem wasn't actually getting to the star, the problem was even finding out where I even needed to get to in the first place, but now I know. So, I either need to do some crazy jumping, or I need a jammer, or something like that. I can't just jump over, right? No. Okay, so it's probably related to the puzzle right behind these walls. Actually, wait a minute. It's not right behind these walls, is it? No, it's actually separated from the puzzle. Yeah. So there's a puzzle room right in here. But there's a barrier in between. Hmm. Hmm. I think what I perhaps need to do is extricate one of the jammers from one of the puzzles. So, I'm going to try that and I will be right back. Aha! And done. If you run at this little place here at just the right speed and angle, you can get up here and take one of the jammers with you. Oh yeah! I believe that's it. I don't think I need to do anything else special. And there we go. Alright, that's all the stars that are marked. Okay, so as far as I know, I am 100% done with the first zone. I don't know of any other puzzles, any other stars, any other weird mysteries. As far as I know, this is it. So, it's finally time to move on. Okay, so I visited here once before, but I didn't do much. I just kind of briefly looked around and then ran back. So now let's take a good look at this place. Athena. Twelve. The Council of Zeus. Okay, it looks like there's some stuff I probably should translate. Uh, the great bronze bulls pulled the carriage forward, mighty bursts of steam issuing from their nostrils. Finally, they came to the gates at the top of the... Here, assembled were all the many generations of the gods, and demigods and souls of mortals, steel and bronze and iron, the memory of flesh. The clouds parted far beneath, revealing the beautiful plains of Macedon, where great gleaming cities had once... Okay, so let me do some translating and see if I can make sense of this hexadecimal stuff. Okay, so here's the translations. The first one is for up here. Oops. So this part up here says, Ascend Olympus. So it doesn't seem to actually really fit in with the sentence. It seems to be kind of an errant little block of text, because if you read it out with the trans... with the, uh... The decoding in there, you know, Ascend Olympus, the great bronze bulls pulled the carriage forward. Doesn't really make any sense. 
So I think it's a bit of text that is related to what I'm reading, but it's not actually meant to be right there. So Ascend Olympus. And then this next one here says Child of Zeus. That's this part here. Which if you look at this, so look at this, this is this is in user.set. So this is a function call. And what is passed in here, I think, would be the argument given to the function. So it's setting the state of the user, I guess, user.set. And the argument it's passing into the function is child of Zeus. That's kind of weird, isn't it? So it's setting the user to child of Zeus? Is that... When it says user, does that mean me? Or like... I, I don't know. I mean, this is just a text file, so I don't think it's related to me. Anyway. Let's take a look at the other ones. Let me switch back to the other scene. There we go. And this last part here, by the way, doesn't really translate to anything. History 1A, Professor Dr. Armin Hulok. The Fall of the Roman Empire. A dialectical approach. Bunch of nonsense there. Uh, caption homo sum humani nihil a me alienum puto. I believe that is Latin. Homo sum. Uh, that's probably the sum of humans. The, the sum of man or something like that. The sum of man is... Human nihil? Nihil. Nihilism? Human emptiness? They feel like an alien something? Alienum? I don't know. Anyway. But, interesting as such perspectives of the decline and ultimate dissolution of the Roman Empire may be, they ultimately put too much emphasis on individual catastrophic events. The real question that must be asked is why the Roman Empire, which had dealt with many, with so many threats and catastro catastrophes over the years, was so incapable of responding to these later problems. We must investigate the division of wealth, the structure of government, the location of power in Roman society. Had the Republic survived or been restored, would Rome still have fallen? What was the role of debt and slavery in creating the conditions for what we now call the Dark Ages? Rome, the saying goes, was not built in a day. It didn't fall in a day either. To register for the class, please email. Okay, so that's for a history class. Gotcha. Alright, let's take a look around this place. a dingy warehouse. Definitely not as pretty as the Pompeii-esque place. Hold on, I'm actually getting somewhere? Does this actually lead somewhere? Eh. Uh, um, this might actually lead somewhere. I was just randomly jumping. Because this game has ingrained in me the belief that I should jump on anything and everything. Okay, where could I go? I don't have any particular goal in mind. Uh... I don't know. Whoa! Oh, crap. Okay, well, let's not worry about it. So, if I had made that jump, I could have walked along here which could have taken me nowhere useful unless okay so here's the thing after finding that floppy disk full of kitten pictures I need to consider the possibility that maybe I don't maybe I shouldn't go somewhere just because I see something like maybe I shouldn't wait to see something and then go oh I need to go there maybe I should try to go places and see if I find stuff there you know, even if I, like, look up there and I don't see a switch, there could be a floppy disk or something. You know, some small little thing hanging out up there. Maybe. Maybe. In fact... There's another walkie-talkie. Right there. 
So, I, yeah, I need to go up there to jump over there and reach it. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I can't believe I just found that out. I mean, I wasn't... I just saw this and thought, huh, maybe I can jump on that. And that was the only reason I went up here. I wasn't trying to solve anything. I just thought, hmm, looks jumpable. Yes. Yes. No. No. Oh. Uh, weird walking sounds. I love those machine gun footsteps. Like when the character uh, character controller kind of freaks out for a second. On, fuck me. Hmm, okay. So you do actually have to jump there. Because there's a couple spots in this thing where you don't have to jump. Yeah, like right here. But these other spots you do. Okay, am I going about this wrong? No, I do have to, well... Hold on, maybe I can jump up on this pipe. Except my head is hitting like an invisible thing. Yeah, I can't get up there. My head's hitting something invisible. Alright, so I do have to jump here. There's like no room to sprint though. There we go. Hello. Now I wonder, is this the same frequency that I had before? Okay, hold on, I wrote that down. On one of my old pieces of paper, uh... Is this it? I'm not sure if this is it. 4-5, hold on. Okay, I have written down 4-5-4-6-2, yeah. Yeah, so that's the same frequency as the other one. Okay. What's happening, Sam? Come on, you're my eyes and ears here. That's it? Okay, what does that tell me? Come on, Sam, what's happening here? You're my... Or, come on, Sam. You're my eyes and ears here. What's happening? Something to that effect. You're my eyes and ears here. So Sam, who I'm... Again, I'm thinking that Sam is perhaps... Wait, who did I... Who was I thinking was Sam? Or no, it was a Sarah. I'm confused now. I'm confusing myself. Maybe I've mixed up Sam and Sarah. I don't know anymore. Because I thought there was a Sarah mentioned in one of the walkie-talkies, and I was thinking that perhaps Nadia Serapai, maybe the Serapai was, maybe they were referring to her as Sarah. Uh, but anyway, okay, so are my eyes and ears here? So somebody was kind of infiltrating, if that's the right word. Somebody had gotten special access, I guess. I mean, those seem to be humans, right? I mean, unlike everything else, which has just been robots. It sounds like an actual human has somehow been in the simulation or something. Hmm. Nah, no floppy disks up there or anything. Looks like that's it for this building.
Okay. Once again, this glorious sight. The tower which I should not ascend, according to the voice. One that looks like it leads up into some sort of maelstrom of doom. This place is gorgeous, though. So I need to keep an eye out for a sphinx. Are those sphinxes? What are those? Hmm? Is that inside? Computer? Yeah, computer. Are those sphinxes? I don't think those are sphinxes. you bleeping and blooping about? Book of Osiris. Dot wiki. The Book of the Scribe of Osiris, sometimes also referred to as the Book of the Journey to Aru, is an ancient Egyptian text discovered in the excavation of... Oh my god. How... Uh, ox... Okay, oxy. I have that part, Oxy. How? What? Ryan? I, I guess it's just Ryan. Oxy Rhinkus? Rhinkus? Oxy Rhinkus? I, I don't know. It has caused a certain degree of controversy among Egypto Egyptologists, as some argue that it is a classic funerary text, such as the Book of Coming Forth by Day while others believe it to be a poetic work not intended to be understood literally. The book tells the story of a dying man who asks a scribe about the afterlife. The scribe, a servant of Osiris, describes how the man's Ka, life force, will become separated from his Ba, personality, and how he will have to reunite the two and become an Ak, living intellect, passing a series of trials in the Duat, underworld in order to reach the paradise of Aru. Unlike similar texts, the Book of the Scribe of Osiris focuses less on giving advice or... A recent study, Carnahan Hassan, suggests the text may have been intended as philosophical commentary on the world of the living through the allegory of the Duat. It remains unclear whether this was the intent of the original pre-Alexandrian author or a result of the later translation into Greek. The earlier manuscript, which is considered to be more authentic, is too fragmentary to provide answers, though perhaps further excavation may... Interesting, so this is getting Egyptian. Whereas a lot of the other stuff I've seen seems more Roman. And of course there's the whole Sphinx thing, which I think is Egyptian, right? At least I've always associated it in my mind with Egyptian culture. But anyway, this story seems kind of allegorical to what I'm doing. The story of a dying man who asks a scribe about the afterlife. How the, the life force has become separated, or will become separated, from his personality, and how he'll have to reunite the two and become a living intellect. In other words, become human passing a series of trials in the underworld in order to reach the paradise. That sounds like me. The man's life force becomes separated from his personality. Is that what I'm doing, passing the trials to reunite my life force and my personality? Hmm. And it tells the story of a dying man. Is the reality that 
This is more the story of a dying race, the humans? Perhaps if I solve this, whatever this is, I will solve humanity? I'll bring humanity back together? I, I have no idea. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name. I'm just going to call you Oxy. The great irony of the Oxy pa Papyri? I'm guessing that's the plural of Papyrus. Uh, the great irony of the Oxy Papyri is that such a vital source of information about the ancient world exists only because of a garbage dump. While the Library of Alexandria burned at the hands of fanatics and conquerors, depriving us of unimaginable insights into history, philosophy, and art, the papers carelessly thrown away by the citizens of Oxy survived to the modern day. And though it is true that a great deal of what we know today is because of the conscious efforts of individual and organizations, such as the spectacular translation and preservation work done during the Islamic Golden Age, so much more is simply the result of coincidence and luck. We've lost texts that the ancients considered to be absolutely essential, while utterly trivial, even plagiarized work has survived unharmed. So if we want our descendants to remember more than glittering emo vampires and auto-tuned teen pop stars, we have to invest in... If we want our descendants to remember more than glittering emo vampires and auto-tuned teen pop stars, Okay, come on, that's kind of a cheap shot. I feel like people beat up on... on Justin Bieber and, uh... I don't even remember the name of the emo vampires. That's a little they matter to me. Uh, Twilight, yes. They're such easy targets. Anyway, there's something to translate here. In fact, this one is short enough that I think I can just translate it right now. Uh, actually, no, it's going to take a little while, so I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, so this part here translates into... Life in death begins anew. Life in death begins anew. Okay, so I've got the stuff to open this. I guess I might as well just go ahead and open it. I guess it'll probably take me to another hub world. But before that, let's take another look around. Let's go to the other side. Beep boop. Oh my god, is this entire world just made up of red puzzles? That's gonna be really, really hard. Heaven and hell. Let's start with hell. William Blake. The ancient tradition the ancient tradition that the world will be consumed in fire at the end of 6,000 years is true, as I have heard from hell. Wait, is this a con... No, I think it just ends. Yeah, it just ends. Okay, and then... For the cherub with his flaming sword is hereby commanded to leave his guard at Tree of Life, and when he does, the whole creation will be consumed and appear infinite and holy, whereas now it appears finite and corrupt. This will come to pass by an improvement of sensual enjoyment. Uh, okay. <laughs> but first, the notion that man has a body distinct from his soul is to be expunged. This I shall do by printing in the infernal method by corrosives, which in hell are salutary and medicinal, melting apparent surfaces away and displaying the infinite which was hid. From William Blake, a collection The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Document blah blah blah. I guess I should probably translate that, but uh, it's probably not important. I'll translate that in a second. Because I suspect I'm going to have to translate something here too. Actually, no, I don't. 
The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. What matter where, if I be still the same, and what should I do, all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater? Here at least we shall be free, the Almighty, the Almighty hath not built, here for it. Wait, what? Is this poetry? Because this is not flowing very well for me. I can't tell if this is like poetry and it's just not even... I, what? Like these don't seem like sentences. The Almighty hath not built. Here for his envy will not drive us hence. Here we may reign secure and in my choice. To reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than cert... What? This is like word salad to me. I, I don't even know. Anyway, let me translate this little part at the end here and I'll be right back. Alright, well, that is a strange one. So, this translates to one thought fills immensity. That's a very strange. So, it looks like that's. This stuff, like this. All this hexadecimal stuff kind of came into the document name? Weird. One thought fills immensity. Maybe I mistranslated that a little bit. Maybe it's feels? Fills? Fills immensity? Fills? I don't know. Weird. Okay, do I have stuff, stuff to open this one? No. Ooh, QR codes. The designer has granted me domain over the lands I have traveled, and with his sigils of power I will make this whole world my domain. Hey, he promised me the world as well. What a joker. I don't think time obeys too many rules here. Or so many rules we can't imagine. Clearly I'm writing this message after you all wrote yours, but maybe we're all here at the same time as well? Hmm, possible. That message just materialized on the wall in front of me. <laughs> I guess that answers that. So everybody is doing these same puzzles at the same time as me. So there's people all around me. Or maybe I shouldn't say people, but there's things all around me. Right now, and I just can't see them. I think I already read this. Yes. Yeah, because I, I know I went into here, so I must have already read these. Mm-hmm. Seems the upper levels are locked tight. Elohim is taking no chances that we stray from his path. Maybe the red things are used to unlock the secret places up here. Hmm. Whoa. I don't know if I read these. The voice keeps speaking to me. I can't get it out of my head. It's wrong. It's all wrong. Listen to me carefully. I have climbed this tower, and no good has come of it. This world is the only world. Elohim's will continues eternal, and paradise is banishing all of this from your mind. All who say they made it to the top are blatantly lying, or they would say what was there. Okay, so this is written by Sam Sarah. Could that be the Sam and or the Sarah that's being referred to in the... Uh, in the... Walkie-talkies? But they have human voices. On the walkie-talkies, whereas, as far as I know, I don't. I've never heard myself speak. That's not to say I can't talk. I mean, who knows? Maybe I can. Alright. Let's see what's around back here. Ooh, what's that? Little secret science station. <gasps> oh. This is obviously part of some super special secret puzzle. I don't know how to deal with the boards, though. Is 
There's gotta be some way to break them, but how? Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get to any puzzles this episode. I think I'm just gonna be scouting this place. Alright, let's go see what's back here. God, this thing is immense. <laughs> That's what the blue power is for. That would be my tenth star, which would allow me to go into the secret star room. Yep, so if I could break that open, I sh and well, I'd also need a connector too. If I could break that open and somehow get a connector then I should have a pretty straight shot to connect there, connect there, and plop the connector right about here. There's a ladder. Let me see if I can get on top of this thing. Yeah. Hmm. It looks way too small for me. Yeah, I wouldn't even fit in there. Well, maybe I would. Wouldn't be comfortable, though. Alright, let's do some more exploring. I want to just run out on the ice. It's probably going to kill me, but... Oh, <gasps> paint! There's no message that I particularly want to write at the moment. I'll just leave it there. Yeah, that's what I figured. The words end. Let's go around the outskirts. God damn. If only I could compete in the Olympics. Let's see if I can get out to these little lumps out here. Secrets. There could be a stashed connector somewhere. Hidden in one of these little chambers. Hmm? Hmm? No? I'm gonna scout this place good before I do a single damn thing. I wish I could reach those islands in the distance, but it seems to be impossible. I know. I wish I could too. I feel your pain. The fact that you said that, though, makes me think that it's even more possible. Ooh! It's a computer!
him. From Bob Rogowski to Alexandra Drennan. Hey, Alex. I agree that we need something that'll keep all the modules working together. Evaluate a final test. And I think I have the perfect solution. It's called the Holistic Integration Manager. A fancy name for something a lot like a dungeon master in pen and paper RPGs. We created it to help run some MMOs back in the day. We needed something that would be able to unite procedurally generated and user submitted content into a coherent whole so the game wouldn't become too chaotic and inconsistent. It's a genuine AI, somewhat limited in its ability to grow, but capable of parsing and understanding text, images, audio, even video. It takes all the information it can find, interprets it, and then builds and maintains a world based on that. It's not perfect, but we don't have a lot of time, and it would be easy to adapt the code for our purposes. In fact, come to think of it, some of it is actually based on routines that you suggested in that paper on... Hmm. Paper on... Nomadics, maybe? Okay, so this is describing Elohim. Elohim is a dungeon master. <laughs> Which makes sense. A holistic integration manager. Hmm. Takes all the information it can find, interprets it, and then builds and maintains a world based on that. Right, because it is the one trying to maintain the world and make it consistent for me, even though it's it's definitely failing at that, but it's trying to do it. Purging the data and telling me to stay within the lines so that I don't see the messy edges. Hmm. Questioning Doubt Conference. Keynote speech by Sarabhai. Uh, questioning Doubt. They say doubt everything, but I disagree. Doubt is useful in small amounts, but too much of it leads to apathy and confusion. No, don't doubt everything. Question everything. That's the real trick. Doubt is just a lack of certainty. If you doubt everything, you'll doubt evolution, science, faith, morality, even reality itself. And you'll end up with nothing. Because doubt doesn't give anything back. But questions have answers, you see. If you question everything, you'll find that a lot of what we believe is untrue. But you might also discover that some things are true. You might discover what your own beliefs are. And then you'll question them again and again, eliminating flaws, discovering lies, until you get as close to the truth as you can. Questioning is a lifelong process. That's precisely what makes it so unlike doubt. Questioning engages with reality, interrogating all it sees. Questioning leads to a constant assault on the intellectual status quo, where doubt is far more likely to lead to resigned acceptance. After all, when the possibility of truth is doubtful, excuse the pun, why not simply play along with the most convenient lie? Questioning is progress. But doubt is stagnation. Interesting. From Rob McLean. Ian Mailing List Archive Project. Hi folks. This is just to let you know that for reasons of convenience and security, we've partitioned EL into two separate systems. The Talos team will be working on EL0, while the Archive team will be working on EL1. You might also notice an EL2 partition, but don't worry about that. It's just the operating system doing its thing. Hmm. There was a thing. I don't know if you remember. There was a thing back in one of the places where things were. Uh, it's back where there was two, like, two boxes in the main puzzle area. Like the main hub area, there were two boxes that I could use, and I wasn't sure what to do with them. And remember how where I got, uh, where I used the box to get into, and where I found an additional box inside of there? There was a computer there? I don't remember what it was, but there was something I tried to read that said something about EL, like, couldn't... 
I don't, like, I couldn't access it because I was on system EL0, I think. And I needed to be on a different system to access it. This is what that's talking about. I think I was on EL0, which is the Talos team. The Archive team is on EL1. And there's also a super secret EL2 partition. He says don't worry about it, but that makes me want to find it all the more. Interesting. Can I do something with that information? Like... What even... What Did it even show up here? I don't even remember. I... Yeah, I, I don't remember. Was it before the kittens or after? I think it was after. It must have been short, because there was an error. Is it here? Maybe it didn't show up here. Cause I, maybe because I couldn't... Oh, no, 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 here it is. Yeah, here it is. So this is, um... Classical Philosophers? Yeah, and this one decoded fine. Yeah, okay, so it's Classical Philosophers. And this was the error. The compressed file cannot be accessed. EL1. An extensive collection of works by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Yes, the compression algorithm LZ19 not available in system EL0. So it needs to be decoded on an EL1 system. I don't know any way of, like, transferring files, so... I don't know if that helps me, but... It's good to keep in mind. I know I'm ruining your immersion. I'm sorry. It's fun to bunny hop, though. Alright. That's a full circuit. An Euler circuit, to be exact. So, where does that lead me? I guess I need to go either up the tower, or into A, or no, uh, B. So this is all red puzzles. You know, I'm gonna go up the damn tower. Let's go. Looks like these are grayed out. Yeah, so let's go to one. I wonder if I can jump Cannot off the top. Location of primary subject. Query. 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 Yeah, screw you, dungeon master. Ain't no master of my domain. Oh look, it's the Stanley Parable line. Now that's a sphinx. Is there anything that we associate more closely with intelligence than curiosity? Every intelligent species on Earth is attracted by the unknown. Our mythologies are full of riddles and mysteries and divine knowledge. Even the word apocalypse... Even the word apocalypse means revelation. It seems like our ancestors always imagined that... Even at the very end, we would solve one last mystery. Is that mystery how to make intelligence? Yes, so it does use the red things. Hmm. Interesting. So the red things are used to unlock forbidden places in the tower.
That is not going to work. That will. What's behind the door? <gasps> Whoa, the music just got really cool. Almost sounds kind of like a thriller now. So, how do I unlock the ability to go to the next floor is what I'm wondering. So I didn't unlock the ability just by unlocking this level. So there must be something more that I need to do. It's a massive maze-like puzzle room. But a puzzle for what? I mean, a star? A red piece? What's what's here? I have no idea. Actually, maybe I don't even need to go into the center. Let's see what's around the outside. Oh. Knowledge. That's what I'm trying to get, knowledge. Curiosity is the strongest motivator, without a doubt. There's an awful lot of pipes and stuff that I could potentially get up on, too. Wait. Huh. Alright, so there's another way in here. Well, you, you know what? I'm not going to get into this puzzle, because this episode is already running a bit long, I think. So, let me just end this here. This game is freaking awesome, and I'm even... Like, if it's even possible, I'm even more engaged in it than I was before. It's just, it's really, really good. It's a such a damn good game. Endlessly fascinating, and the puzzles are just wonderfully designed. And I'm pretty sure I could jump onto the wall. God, I know I'm supposed to stop the episode, but I just want to jump on stuff. Oh, oh. That's the thing that opens when you finish the puzzle. Anyway, I have to stop. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.